Okay, I'm sorry guys, I skipped. I picked up the doll and looked at it closely. Sure, it looked pretty weird at first, but it could be cute. If I looked at it from the right angle, I gave him a small smile. Thanks! Hey, okay. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you smiling, even though the thing I made still kind of creeps me out. <clears throat> okay, so I feel like I should make a cheat sheet. The blue heart is is, is Matthew. Um, I couldn't really tell the color Damien's was. I think Sam was green, and that's all I got. <clears throat> anyway, you should come with me to the dining room. We're almost finished with the food, and, well, I don't mean to brag, but we're pretty decent chefs. But you did, though. You did brag. Sounds great! Lead the way! Mm, something smells good! My stomach rumbled in agreement. I was starving. Oh, the girl's awake. Yeah, cool, thanks. I am the girl. That's me. Excuse you. I have a name, you know. Should we really care? Dude, what a dick. What a piece of shit. Sam, I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. Uh huh. You got in trouble. <laughs> Whatever. I apologize for his attitude. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. Meal? For a second, my mind didn't understand what James meant. Maybe it was a doll getting in... What? Maybe it was the doll getting to my head and distracting me. Oh, that's right. Damon and Matthew mentioned they were making dinner as an apology. Oh, wait, you don't have to. We insist. Besides, it's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. Alright, fair enough. Alright, well, thank you. <clears throat> Matthew put down the last of the plates on the table and bowed a bit extravagated, extravagantly to me, gesturing to the pa table with a sweeping motion. Ha, ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. The table was filled with various foods from an, an eclectic selection of cuisines. One portion of the table filled with elegantly plated Asian foods, and another portion with some yummy-looking desserts. And there were more and more plates than I could have possibly imagined. Well, that's a lot of food, and it looks so good. We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. Oh, blushy. Well, sweet? Me? That's enough, Eric. <laughs> You're no fun, James. I don't need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. Aw, that's cute. I don't know what came over me, whether it was his politeness or maybe his power, but I couldn't take help but take his offered arm. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was nothing that seemed to set him apart from his brothers. Not to mention, he didn't really seem to uphold much appreciation for them. Miss, I have to ask. Why do you live alone? Oh, it's kind of a long... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. Oh, uh, sure. Why not, right? <clears throat> if I said no, I wouldn't have to read more. <laughs> Should have just done that. To put it to put it briefly, I just moved here today. That explains the luggage you brought in when you came through the front doors. By the way, we put your belongings in the room you were sleeping in. That seems to be the master bedroom, I believe. Thanks. This house is really big. I didn't think I even explored the entirety of the estate when I was a child. You lived here before? Um, no. Truth be told, this is my grandfather's house. I used to visit him all the time when I was younger. May I ask why you now live in your grandfather's house? He actually passed away yesterday. It was bequeathed to me in his will, and I was sent to live here, whether I liked it or not. My condolences. It seems like you don't like the idea of living here. It's not that I don't like this house, or that I don't have fond memories of being here. It's just the implications that come of with staying at this estate. It's complicated to explain. How do you feel about it? Okay, 
James is, is yellowy, I think. That was what the color was. <clears throat> Yellow. I certainly wasn't expecting that question, but in a good way. It was different from what I had heard the entire day at school. I appreciate the fact that he was willing to listen. I feel angry, sad, scared, and confused. It's hard to pick out the different emotions that I'm feeling right now. I wish I was stronger. You don't have to be strong. Aww. What do you mean? I understand that you're going through a difficult time, so it's okay to feel those emotions. You don't have to be strong at all. Thank you. Uh, are you alright? There seems to be a small bruise on your cheek. He caught me off guard with that comment. I thought no one would have noticed something as small as that. Oh, I'm fine. He stopped and leaned in close. A bit too close for comfort. Or maybe it was just me, inspecting my face. He was really quite tall, having to bend over so much as to look me straight in the face. It was hard to look at him, especially when he was this close. After a few seconds, he straightened up and began walking again. Hmm. Well, if you're having any problems, I'm always here to listen. That's really kind of you to offer that. My pleasure. Here's your seat. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Uh, oh, uh... Eric was very charming. His smile pulled up my heart. The way he kept flirting with me definitely de designated him as the charmer of the demons. Yet there was a little distance in his eyes. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier. Stealing your second kiss like that. Huh? Oh, yeah. When I didn't believe that they were incubi. I it's fine, I guess. I, I mean, you didn't just get up and grab me for no reason. I'm not as forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> Suddenly, Eric leaned in and whispered in my ear. I won't lie, though. I enjoyed kissing you and feeling you melt in my arms. I can't do this game, guys. I can't. I'm just not strong enough. <coughs> oh my god, okay. <clears throat> I was torn between smacking him and trying to play it cool. Um, be cool. Be, be, okay, hold on. I'm just gonna save. I'm just gonna save. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save. real quick. Real quick. I'm almost safe. Alright, <clears throat> um, let's be cool, because smacking isn't going to make anyone fall in love with you. <laughs> you sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He batted his eyelids of his, as if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. Well, like you're trying to get in my pants half the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment he looked away, losing a bit of his smile. Before I could question it, though, he turned back to me with this new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. I felt my face heat up simply at his words. I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. I drew my attention back from the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Aaron lean a Aaron. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all the dishes with a dra dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humus humorously enough, Matthew looked at him as with a shocked expression as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the queen of the Nile! <laughs> I like Matthew. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. So here's the thing about James, right? <clears throat> I feel James on, like, a personal level because I correct everyone in my mind with <laughs> with proper grammar. <laughs> but I'm not a douche and I don't do it out loud, just in my head. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. 
Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric. He, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like, in a way, he was much more mature than the others. Especially Eric. Huh? Is, Is something funny? <laughs> N no, it's nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Eric, knock it off! In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked his, er, cocked his head up and glared at Eric. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had this big, tough act that was obvious. And it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. Yeah. Tell him. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. T yeah, Matthew. Matthew's on my side. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. <laughs> I cannot believe I named her her. It's so stupid. Oh my god, why am I dumb? Guys, help me. Please, why am I so dumb? Uh, I'm her. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. Yeah, it's just her. It's easy. I, I figured it might be easy for everyone to know. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if it was natural for for them to be around humans. I guess that's just how Inky Bye worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once, they looked at me. I don't know why, but having them all looked at me made me feel kind of important. Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still don't know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house is perfectly understandable? Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? What's your problem, bro? Step off. Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? You're fucking rude, dude. You need to, you need to relax. <coughs> I'm having vocal issues and you need to calm down. No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So you're all better now, right? Yup, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. That wasn't very but sexual. we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. Huh. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power, it was anything physical. I wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you plan to do now? Yeah, what are we going to do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here, and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there if they didn't know 
If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably don't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or, on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then. I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood amongst it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy while I stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was nice just standing back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one I like better than me, so I had to spend more time with myself. But there was certainly bitterness that coupled with being alone. It made me just feel so sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at the moment. And even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I had never seen him before that. What better time to go see him, then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. After school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how I was going to get there, and I was armed with only a scrap of paper with the address scribbled onto it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. Isn't it weird that back in the day, like, that's how you got around? Like, now I just, I, I'm in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, you just, just put it in your phone. Dude, navigation will tell you where to go. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed up against the wall, eyes looking at the strangers passing by. And, like always, people continued to pass by, and life continued to go on. I was I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in a situation that I was already I was I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that I was silly for even thinking that I can change things with my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face. But it was obvious that whoever it was talking to me knew who I was. And for that, and from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving in rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I had become part of a crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them. Though, would I? I... I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement I had imagined when I first moved in. There was the matter of making sure no one had found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I ever explain having guys living in my house? Imagine if my friends came over. They would practically think I was part of some harem or something. Oh, God. Imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Ugh. This was hard. Maybe I should have written out the pros and cons list before actually having to make a decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too much about it. it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. It was strange that I happened to remember my grandfather said to me when I was little. But it did kind of make sense. They weren't in the same exact situation I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it'd be I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help, as weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Um well, um y you could What was that, lovely lady? 
That is, uh... Spit it out already. Fuck you. You could stay with me here, if you like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you needed a place to stay. And, well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed to make sense. <clears throat> it was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers, or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guests that come over. Well, save for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so, yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. What? Are you serious? Fuck you. Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> they all seemed to like the idea, except for Sam. And, hey, I didn't really hate the idea e either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me to take care of the house, given they would given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. Fuck you. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful, if you need a bedfellow... Oh, that's not cool, dude. Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be alone for a while. I just messed that all up. I don't care. I'm moving on. Maybe it was because they all needed... Oh my God. Never mind. Let me start over. So what ah! are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in. I skipped. I'm sorry. <laughs> Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James' eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. <laughs> I'll let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. Uh, hold what in? My laugh? Okay, I'm assuming, okay, if I'm going with the assumption of laugh, hold on, I'm gonna say, going with the assumption of th my laugh I couldn't hold in, then this would be like, I did laugh, this is I didn't laugh, and this is I don't know. So, fuck you, I'm gonna laugh. Green, pink, blue, what are these colors? Ah, that thing, what does these mean? Okay, blue, I'm pretty sure it's Matthew, and um, I don't really care about anything else, so whatever. <coughs> also, it's really hard to do... I gave her such a high pitched voice and because my like my throat isn't doing what I want it to do, it's really hard to do her voice. So I hope I'm doing it right and I can't really remember what her voice used to sound like. So I hope I'm at least either doing it right or at least getting close. Like please. <clears throat> I couldn't hold in my laughter laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. <laughs> You're both so funny! Both of their faces turned slightly pink before looking away from me, and they swallowed the food in their mouths. Sh shut up! We're not funny! We're hungry! Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew! Fuck you, Sam. What?! I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <laughs> they were... F they were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Eventually, we ate dinner together. 
It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel as part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. You, you turn the tables on me.